You know, I'm something of a Portal master myself, so I've been a huge fan of the Portal games for a long, long time, as far back as I can remember. I think Portal 2 was the first story-based game I ever beat on PC. So I started with the absolute best, I beat that, and then I was like, why would I play anything else? I've already played the best game, like, ever made. So I just kept playing it, and beating it, and I eventually played the first game as well, and then I played Stories Mel, and then Aperture Tag, and finally Reloaded. If you thought Stories Mel was a hard game, just try to play Reloaded, seriously. If you want some more non-canonical story between Portal 1 and 2, you've got Stories Mel. If you want that true Portal challenge, you've got Reloaded, and if you want something in the middle, you've got Aperture Tag. I'd wager that's a pretty fair assessment of the, the main mods. Or you could be a madman and try to play Wheatley's Unscientific Tests, a bundle of community maps. I played a part one and immediately called it quits. Holy shit, that is hard. But anyways, when I heard there was yet another mod coming out, this one with full voice acting, original mechanics, and possible non-canonical story relevance, I was freaking hyped. Portal Revolution was looking to be the beginning of the next generation of Portal mods. So how do we know if it lives up to the hype? Lucky for us, I've created a scoring list based on many aspects of this game. So let's run through them one by one and we'll see how it stacks up against the other mods. To give you an idea of the level of quality presented here, let's go. You may have expected me to start with the gameplay, but the visuals are by far the most noticeable thing when you first boot up the game. I've played some truly beautiful community chambers over the years, and Revolution gives all of them a run for their money. This shot right here is absolutely stunning, with an orange backlight behind this giant turbine. Subtle lighting effects such as these are everywhere throughout the game, with random lights poking up through the floors and ceiling, colorful atmospheric lights, and even the portals themselves give off a stronger glow. Now, I do have to mention, these advanced lighting and texture effects do put a noticeable strain on performance. I have a pretty high-powered PC, and even I have to bump down the resolution for this game to run as smooth as butter. I'm not like a true PC gamer, though, and I only have a Lenovo PC, no RGB desktop computer and a modified tower and processor. Bumping down the resolution isn't a huge deal for me, so I won't knock it any points for that, and it does give you a lot of things you can turn on and off, which is really nice. There's also a few settings you can play around with that really add a nice touch to the whole experience. You can change the crosshair style to Portal 1, Portal 2, Simple, and Hidden. You can also change the size of this crosshair. This doesn't affect gameplay at all really, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. You can also completely remove your portal gun from the frame, which is something that I personally haven't seen in any other mod. I could be wrong on that point, though. I haven't done extensive digging through the other mods, but that's the first time I've seen something like that. A large part of this game takes place near the surface of the facility, and a lot of the test chambers have open ceilings. Now I've played above Aperture, and let me tell you, an open air test chamber is a completely different experience. Revolution takes the best parts of those community chambers and enhances them with more detailed environments. Lots of foliage growing around every crack and crevice. Some chambers you play through during the day, other times you'll be playing at night, it's great and some chambers have dilapidated looks just for fun. There's a chamber in Chapter 3 which has half of its floor underwater, cause why not? You can actually walk through this shallow water and it won't kill you. Point is, when I remember this mod, I'm gonna remember the visuals and how stunning they are. Some mods are admittedly hit or miss with how everything looks, and this is definitely the best looking one by far. I've played individual chambers that do look better, with really impressive lighting, but when it comes to fully packaged games, Revolution definitely takes home the award for best dress. In Portal Revolution, you play as an unnamed test subject pulled out of stasis for a specific mission. You must first play through a round of tests, introducing you to the classic portal gun mechanics. But before being baked like a cake, the core who's been guiding you saves you from your death. His name is Sterling and he wants to restore Aperture to its former glory. I tried to look after the place in her absence, but I don't have the tools. Good news though, I found better tools. A device capable of repairing the whole enrichment center. 
Part of this goal involves reactivating a device called the Spire. At first, it's kind of unclear what this machine does. You're given the vague description that it'll help rebuild the facility. But after navigating your way through dilapidated chambers, you finally reach this machine, and it's revealed that it is in fact a new teleportation device built after the Borealis disappeared. While your portal gun needs to create holes in space-time to move matter, the Spire can instantaneously move matter from any point in space to another random location. And after stepping into the Spire yourself, Sterling reveals that he wants to use the Spire to rebuild GLaDOS. Let's rebuild the central core. Oh, right. You probably know her as GLaDOS. It's about time we bring her back, don't you think? And you are accidentally teleported back to the bottom of the facility. After you wake up, your portal gun is completely destroyed. You can't even pick it up. And you begin to make your way through the sealed off testing shafts we saw in Portal 2. We find our way into the part of Aperture where they produce personality cores, and we meet Amelia Conley, a scientist who worked in Aperture's research group for artificial intelligence. She unwillingly had her brain scanned and put into a personality core, and she guides you through more rounds of tests, making your way back up to the surface. Once there, you face Sterling, and you try to put a stop to his plan. With Amelia's help, you're able to prevent Sterling from restarting the Spire and rebuilding GLaDOS. Unfortunately, at the very end of the game, the Spire activates anyway and teleports that entire chunk of the facility straight to the moon, where Amelia finds you and puts you in an indefinite stasis. The end. So I just gave you, like, an extremely bare-bones rundown of the game's main story, but seeing it play out in real time is so cool. Everything contained within this game is technically non-canon as all these mods aren't officially endorsed by Valve, but it might as well be. This game touches on the creation of personality cores, the creation of GLaDOS, how her remains might have found their way back inside the facility, and many other things. Even the Borealis and Black Mesa both get a mention, which is awesome. The story itself is also relayed to us at a perfect pace, slowly being expanded upon between test chambers. You'll play like 5 to 10 chambers using new mechanics, which we'll get to, and then you'll spend a while exploring the unseen parts of the facility, just trying to get to the new set of chambers. For example, right after you get the dual portal gun in Chapter 3, the elevator breaks down and you have to explore a bit to find the next chamber. It's all perfectly balanced. While other mods like Reloaded are strictly testing, Revolution caters to those fans who just want to explore a bunch, a camp which I am absolutely a part of. Nothing overstays its welcome, and it ensures that you never get sick of solving these tests. And it's a really fun story too. Getting to meet new personality cores who aren't immediately trying to kill us, watching those cores interact with each other with their differing philosophies on whether or not GLaDOS should be resurrected. It's all really, really fun stuff. If I had one small criticism, I'd say the ending feels a bit rushed, admittedly. The boss fight at the end is amazing. It doesn't repeat the same fight from the first two Portal games, but the actual way the game ends is rushed through and leaves the player confused while watching the credits. There is an after credits scene, but in my opinion it should really go before the credits, because watching it is really critical to understanding how the game ends and why it ends like that. You don't see that you're on the moon until after the credits roll, which is a cool reveal, I grant you. I was just left kind of confused before I saw it. Again, minor criticism, and it didn't really affect my overall enjoyment of the game. So Revolution is a treasure trove of fun new portal mechanics. Each individual round of tests takes its sweet time to introduce each new mechanic to you in full. These include, but are not limited to, gel cleansing fields, a pair of laser cubes which can wirelessly transmit a laser, and diversity events which can move both testing elements and the player. They make the game really fun and replayable. My favorite of these mechanics is definitely the laser cubes. What an ingenious idea, honestly. Some chambers are simple, where you move the cube in front of the receiver. Others are much, much more complicated, where you need to route it through a set of portals, but only after you use it to activate a lift to get to the exit. It gets pretty complicated, but not so complicated that you rage quit. Speaking of which, Is this game challenging? Well, Portal Revolution has an amazingly fine-tuned difficulty level. There's actually a quote here from the developers. Portal Revolution's puzzle difficulty starts where Portal 2 stops. But fear not, 
All new mechanics and advanced portal tricks are taught to you. We have ensured through rigorous playtesting that every player can solve the puzzles. Although very few chambers require portals to be fired mid-air, no puzzles require advanced tricky movement. Which, believe me, is really nice. I'd consider myself experienced when it comes to solving portals test chambers across all mods. Most I can do without a walkthrough. For context, I made it about eh, halfway through Reloaded before I needed a walkthrough. Even for really experienced portal players, that game is very difficult. There were only a few chambers in Revolution that I really needed to take some time to think about. Because while they're not particularly difficult, they utilize tricks that were heavily used in other harder mods like Reloaded. A lot of chambers involve fizzling and reobtaining a cube to solve a test, which a lot of players don't immediately think to do. Like, a lot of these chambers pull this trick. And if you're not used to it, you could be left very confused. I should mention that for a lot of this game, you only have a single portal gun. The one where you can only place the blue portal. The orange portal is placed for you, which only a few chambers in the official portal games actually feature this type of gun, I believe. It allows the player to get comfortable with just shooting a single portal for a while. Then they introduce the dual gun. One particular test I was stuck on for about an hour was this one where the final solution requires you to rest a cube on an inactive faith plate, then reset the chamber's power to then activate the plate, sending the cube towards the exit. It's those extremely outside-the-box solutions that really get you. It's the perfect level of challenge for any Portal player. Newbies might find it hard to figure this stuff out at first, and it may take them a bit more time, but they eventually will get it. More experienced Portal thinkers will probably grab onto these ideas pretty quickly, but they'll still have a lot of fun. It's the best difficulty we could have ever asked for, honestly. There's also quite a few easter eggs and references in this mod. I don't want to spoil all of them, but I've taken note of a few of them here. For example, Chamber 12 in Chapter 3? It's the same Chamber 12 from Portal 1, where the game teaches you that momentum through portals is conserved for longer and higher jumps. It's extremely dilapidated and you enter the chamber through an observation window, not the elevator. For someone who's replayed that chamber countless times, it immediately tipped me off as familiar. There's also a hidden vent you can go through before entering this elevator, and it takes you to a room with a single chair, and speakers blasting a strange noise. You can't interact with this door or this intercom, it's honestly really eerie, and if someone knows if this is a reference to something or why it's here, please let me know in the comments. It might be from that Ratman Portal comic or something. Also, the dual portal gun you get in Chapter 3 has part of its shell missing, since it's just been sitting in this open air for 60,000 years, give or take. Just a cool little detail I didn't notice on my first playthrough. There are so many more easter eggs, but I don't want to spoil all of them. In conclusion, how does Revolution stack up against the other mods? I'm just gonna get this out of the way real quick. It's most definitely the best looking mod by far. They all look fantastic in their own right, but Revolution just really takes it to the next level with its subtle glow effects and complex lighting. But it's not just the lighting. A lot of these behind the chambers areas look fantastic, with that retro machine architecture we all fell in love with after Portal 2. For the story, I really enjoyed my time with Revolution. It is extremely well paced, with a significant non-canon lore drop in almost every single chapter. This game even allows you to drop into a chapter at specific points using sub-chapters, which is absolutely something I wish the mainline Portal games had. I appreciate how the ending was unique, and how the boss fight was especially creative. I would still give the gold medal for Story to Story's Mel for its mind-blowing ending, with cinematic cutscenes to boot, but Revolution definitely gets the silver medal for this one. The new mechanics are fascinating, and they're all taught to you rigorously. The laser cubes are still my favorite, although the others are brilliantly worked into the test chambers in their own ways. Seriously, whoever came up with the idea of these active waterfalls as a legitimate test mechanic, clap and a half to you. All of these mechanics together barely edge out Reloaded for the coolest new ways to solve portal tests. That third portal is such a mind blow though, and it, it deserves its own special praise for making these chambers especially mind melting. Lastly, the difficulty level is just perfect. 
No complaints at all, it was relatively easy to finish this game over the course of just 3 or 4 gaming sessions, with about 6 or 7 hours of total playing time. This mod is free, by the way, and 7 free hours of new, grade A portal content is always a win. While I do love Reloaded for its difficulty, it's definitely showing off a bit, and Revolution strikes that perfect balance where it's still replayable. A major problem I have with Reloaded is that it gets so hard, I just can't go back and replay it without immediately giving up. So Revolution definitely gets the cake on this one. Overall, my ranking goes as follows. In last place would be Aperture Tag. Still a blast to play in its own right, but sometimes that game lacks a bit of polish. Still really, really good though, and it's only last place because the others are so high. Third place is Reloaded. Immensely difficult, but still really cool. This one definitely has a bit more polish, and that ending cutscene music is so bumpin'. Second place is Stories Mel for still being pretty difficult, but also having a lot of story relevance as well. That ending still hits hard to this day. And finally, I get to reveal to you that Revolution is my new favorite. Definitely not as long as Stories Mel, but its enhanced visuals, balance of story and exploration, and awesome new mechanics definitely offer an experience that can't be beat. This is also a mod that will be infinitely replayable because of its subchapters function. It apparently took 8 years for this mod to come out, and I'd say it was a thousand percent worth the wait, and the slight delay it took to come out. So in conclusion, if you're a Portal fan and you've been dying to see some new content, give this your full attention, please. It's getting overwhelmingly positive reviews, and they're all well deserved. This is truly one of the best Portal mods we've gotten, and it really makes me excited for the future of this series. Any time that we can revitalize interest in the Portal community is one step closer to getting the elusive Portal 3 from Valve. But until then, this is the closest thing we're gonna get, and it deserves the praise. So those are my thoughts on Portal Revolution. Bit of a deviation from my normal output, but this mod was just so good, I just, I had to talk about it. Let me know in the comments if you've played this mod, and tell me your thoughts on it. If you haven't played it yet, it's free, go download it on Steam right frickin' now. Anyways, my name is Candles, and thank you so much for watching.